for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, E for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Yes, they spell camel. Your taste will tell you about camel's rich, full flavor. Your throat will welcome camel's cool mildness. So draw up a chair for tonight's camel show starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> What happened to you? Hey. Why, why are you late? Oh, am I in trouble, Abbott? I drove my car to a red light. They're going to find me $2,000. Oh, ridiculous. They can't find you $2,000 for going through a red light. Oh, no. This light was in a drugstore window. <laughs> hey, that's terrible. Yeah, they also want me to pay $300 for costs. Uh, what are the costs for? Well, when my car hit that drugstore, I sailed over the windshield and slid down a long soda fountain. In route, I knocked over eight molded milks six banana splits, a bowl of tuna fish salad, and I wound up on a toothpaste counter with Irium and Miriam. Hey, wait a minute. Anything else? Yeah, the policeman took my Boy Scout knife and my Lone Ranger revolver out of my car. Costello, why do you carry a knife and revolver when you drive a car? So I can shoot up one street and cut across the other. Hey, Costello, are you one of those Hollywood drivers, Lou, who drives like a madman and pays no attention to the pedestrians? Or are you, uh, the other kind? What other kind? Uh, there's others? Yes, there's others. Where were you going in such a hurry? Well, I had a date with one of those Powers models. She had one of them funny names. Uh, was it, uh, Candy Jones? No. Shelly Williams? No. Uh, Choo Choo Johnson? No. I got it. Sour Cream Shapiro. I... <laughs> Sour Cream Shapiro? Yep. Say, she's the most popular girl in this deck of the woods. Any girl that necks in the woods must be popular. <laughs> but I ain't going out with this girl no more. She lives in Glendale. And over there, they got a 12 o'clock curfew. Well, they have a 12 o'clock curfew in every town, Lou. At noon? Uh... <laughs> Costello, day by day, you get more stupid. How can you be such a consistent idiot? I got a charge account. <laughs> What's your excuse? What's my excuse? What's your excuse? No, just look at you. Your appearance is disgraceful. Look, why didn't you wear that new shirt I gave you? I can't. The collar is too high. Every time I hiccup, my head disappears. I, I don't know why you're ever coming here tonight. Well, I had to have it. Why? All my little kid friends, they're all waiting for me to tell them a story. Of one of those famous stories I always tell them. Only tonight I'm going to tell them about Aladdin and his wonderful lamp. Oh, do tell. I'm going to tell it right now. The only thing is, Abbott, I ask you to keep your mouth quiet and shut up oh, and you don't say nothing. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Now, you don't interrupt me at no time at all while I tell well, a story. Don't worry about me. Not like you do every week. No, 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 no. So why don't you slip over to Tom Brenneman to get yourself an orchid? <laughs> 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 right, go ahead with the story. I want to hear it. Okay. All right. Now, little kitty, here I go. All right. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Aladdin. Al Aladdin, Aladdin who? He? Aladdin who? <laughs> Aladdin who? Yeah. Aladdin, a foreign country. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Abbott, I asked you to leave me alone. No, no, You're right. I just pretty want to make soon, sure. eh? I, didn't, I never heard this story. Well, keep quiet. All right, I'm sorry. You get me so mad. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> now, Aladdin had a much magic carpet. Magic carpet. He sat on a carpet and zoop. It flew up in the air. Now, Wait, as soon as the carpet the flew up in the air... What made the carpet go up? What made the carpet go up? Yeah. The OPA took the steel off and up the place. <laughs> Now look, Abbott, I'm, I'm asking you for the last well, time. Please keep your mouth shut. Oh, right, now, don't take it so seriously. You make such a fool. All right, take it easy. All right, go ahead. Now, one day, Aladdin was flying along on his carpet when another guy went past on a rug. This guy pulled out a towel and started shooting at him. Now, Aladdin now, just didn't a minute, want nobody now, to shoot at him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Lou. Now, wait a minute, hold on, on, hold on. How could he shoot at him with a towel? This was a cannon towel. Towel. <laughs> What are you getting me seeing me all mixed up? Now, go ahead with the story. Now, one day, Aladdin found an old lamp. A real old, old lamp. Oh, the, the oh, lamp was so old, it was uh, extinct. Yeah, it was extinct. It smelled from oil. All right. <laughs> what do you keep on this? So let me tell a story. Well, go ahead, tell it. Now, Aladdin rubbed the lamp, and yoink! A genie appeared with a white horse. Aladdin grabbed the horse's hair. Now, uh, and then you he mean, no, no, no. Horse. You mean Aladdin grabbed the horse by the mane. He grabbed the horse by the mane? Yeah. By the mane what? You grab the horse by the main what? Well, what are you saying? Go ahead. 
Oh, all I know is you grabbed the horse by the mane. That's yeah, all. The mane, the mane, the horse's no. neck. The horse's neck? Yeah. Anybody knows that the horse's neck? They're human. Let him neck. Oh, right, all right, all right. <laughs> now, when the genie told Aladdin he could have anything he wished for, Aladdin would just rub the lamp. So every time he rubbed the lamp, he got presents. So he rubbed and he rubbed, and he got stuff and more stuff until he had surplus. Well, so after he had Wait surplus, a minute, just a minute. Now, just a minute. Enough is enough. How can you use the word surplus? When you don't even know what surplus means. I don't know what surplus means. You don't. Shame on you, Abbott. I know what surplus means. What does it mean? I know it's a big word. What does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. Surplus means like if I have two pairs of shoes, that's surplus. So I give you one pair. Now, if I got two dogs, that's surplus. So I give you one dog. Now, if I got two beautiful blondes, that's surplus. So I... <laughs> Abbott, why don't you put them shoes on and take that dog for a walk? <laughs> Wait a minute, you faker. How dare you come out here and deliberately take a classic from the Arabian Nights and twist it into a mishmash of falsehood and fabricate a diabolic absurdity. Wait a minute, Abbott. Watch your language. What do you mean? This program is being wigwagged to the campfire girls. <laughs> Castella, are you trying to ridicule me? Your friend who sticks to you through thick and thin. Why do you treat me so shamefully? Oh, I'm a bad boy. And are you sorry you told that story? But I've told that story with great success many times on the radio. Uh, how is it I never heard you tell that story on the air? Well, I... I... Well, well, it so happens I did the story in the East and it was transcribed from an earlier hour so it could be turned off at a more convenient time. <laughs> Castella, I can't make up my mind whether you're a simpleton, an imbecile, or a moron. Ha! <laughs> Uh, got you over a barrel, ain't I? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Yes, three leading independent research organizations put this question to 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand name most was Camel. Well, that's natural, you camel smokers will say. I like Camel's rich, full-bodied flavor and cool mildness, so why shouldn't doctors? They smoke for pleasure, just like anybody else. If you're not a Camel smoker, why don't you try a Camel on your T-zone, that's tea for taste and tea for throat, now? See if you don't say, yes, sir, Camel's suit my T-zone to a T. <laughs> Light up a camel cigarette and listen to Skinny Ennis sing. Met a gal in Calico, down in Santa Fe. Used to be her Sunday boat, till I rode away. Do I want her? Do I want her love? Yes, sirree. Will I win her? Will I win her love? Wait to see. Working in a rodeo. Go from town to town, see most every kind of gal, every kind of gal. But who made my heart too? It's the yard, it's the old, my little gal, Calico. Better be. Am I hoping to be roping her? Yes, sir. But who made my heart sing? Yip the eye, yip yip the yaw. My little gal in Calico. We're rich. My new invention is finished. I just built a machine for 75 cents that will save billions for science. A 75-cent machine that will save scientists yes, billions? Yes. What does it do? 
What does it do? Give me your hat and I'll show you. There you go. Now I placed the hat on the machine and pulled the lever that lowers this big cleaver. Costello, you've ruined my hat. You've cut my new Adam hat in half. Hooray! It's worked! I have split the Adam. <laughs> yeah, dummy. That thing will never make a nickel. But I have an idea that will make us $10,000 by tomorrow night. Just think. You'll be able to get a complete new wardrobe, a diamond ring, a car, and a chauffeur. And just a minute, Abbott. You ain't gonna get me to be queen for a day. No, 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 Costello. Now, here's how we get the $10,000. Now, I've made arrangements with an inventor to use you in a great experiment. Here He's coming. going to shoot you in a rocket to the moon. And just for that, we get $10,000? Yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. I wish you'd... <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Who's gonna shoot who and what to wear? Calm down, Costello. <laughs> You've got nothing to be scared about. There's nothing to it. You just get into the rocket ship and you get a free ride to the moon. <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> For a minute, I thought you said I was gonna go to the moon. You did say it! <laughs> Abbott, I'm not gonna do it. You're not going to do it. I'm not gonna do it. You're not going to do it. No. After all the trouble, I had convincing that scientist that you were the man. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? What are you, a coward? A milksop? A white-livered rat? A yellow snake? You can bet I'm in there someplace. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't gonna do it. Shame on you, Costello. You're not going to do it. Think of me. Think of what I went through convincing that scientist that you, <laughs> you should have this great opportunity that we could make $10,000. Do you realize the scientist turned you down three times? He did? He did. He didn't want you to go in that rocket, but I forced the issue. That's my pal. You'll bet your life. I he insisted on it. He forced the issue. Absolutely. When the guy didn't want me, you forced I the issue. I forced the issue. So off I go. That's where you go. That scientist said you didn't have brains enough to fly a kite, well, let alone a rocket. He said you were an incompetent nincompoop, a bloated blockhead, and a nitwitted nanidity. Mm-hmm. That scientist said I was an incompetent nincompoop, a bloated blockhead, and a nitwitted nanidity? <laughs> was that his message to me? Yes. Then I want you to take my answer back to him. What is it? You tell him. He's right. <laughs> Period. He asked, I ain't gonna do it. No. Oh, dog, dog sense. Those rocket ships are safe. They operate on uh, uranium-235. Haven't you heard of uranium-235? No, but I know a honey at mean 532. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking about the uh, scientific formula for u uranium-235. Oh, Rabbit, why did you say so? I just happen to have an army. No, swell. Uranium-235 is an isotri. It's surrounded by twist and frack activity activated by charcoal gum. <laughs> With... Ha-ha! <laughs> you didn't think I knew it, eh? <laughs> With electrical rheostat, on the Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe. All this is in the process of. Process of what? Exactly. And on that, you may quote me. <laughs> uh, come in. Greetings, Mr. Abbott. Where is the chump? Uh, sucker. Uh, the boy who's going to the moon in my rocket. Uh, right here, Professor. This is Lou Costello. Mr. Costello, to make this experiment, you should have your parents' consent. Where is your mater and pater? They went to the theater with my braider and seder. <laughs> well, I hope I have more luck with you than we've had with the other 35 rockets I've aimed at the moon. You shot 35 guys up there already? What happened to them? I don't know. I lose more darn rockets that way. <laughs> well, I ain't going. That moon is a terrible place. Oh, no, my boy. The moon is lovely. The moon is made of green cheese. How did he get that cheese way up there? Haven't you heard of... Uh, Old uh, buttermilk sky. <laughs> My, that's pretty. Would you care to churn in? <laughs> I don't mind. Let's skim through it together. <laughs> oh, All right, Costello, cut it out. Costello. Costello. <laughs> professor, Costello will be ready to take off tomorrow morning. Just a second, Professor. What kind of a rocket is this? Well, it has 46 propellers. It's air-conditioned. It has a snack bar. What makes <laughs> it run? Twisted rubber bands. <laughs> Twisted rubber bands? That was a snappy answer. <laughs> I got my laugh, Fatty. Don't stretch it. 
Forget him, Costello. We haven't got much time. Now, what equipment will you need for the trip? Well, as long as you talk me into it, Abbott, I'll need a supply of food and a native girl in case I get lost. Some warm clothing and a native girl in case I get lost. <laughs> a camera and a native girl in case I get lost. And a map of Rhode Island. <laughs> Why are you taking a map of Rhode Island? That's to make sure I get lost. <laughs> Hiya, fellas. Hello, Skinny. Hello, Hoghead. I heard you were going to the moon, and I brought you something to take along. A pair of skunk earmuffs. What for? In case you meet a skunk with cold ears. <laughs> Kitty, who is this with you? Oh, pardon me. Hey, Costello, this is my girlfriend, Gwendolyn. She came down to get a last look at you. Oh, Mr. Costello, I consider myself fortunate to meet such a creature of such intellectual stature. <laughs> oh! <laughs> This kid sounds like she's got a snoo e <laughs> Oh, this association young gives me the same satisfaction and exhilaration as that musical composition, cement mixer, puppy puppy. <laughs> what does she gargle? Brillo? <laughs> well, I must make my departure. And may I make my congratulations on your vet year into the future? You bet you're, and I'm glad to have met your. <laughs> well, goodbye, and I consider myself fortunate to have messed up with kids. <laughs> Am I glad she's gone? This kid could ruin my dickin' <laughs> and louse up my punctuation. <laughs> hey, look, Adela, it was Merlin Maxwell. Ah, oh, there you are, Lewis, honey. Oh, Abbott, she <laughs> called me by my maiden name again. <laughs> Lewis. Oh, Lewis, honey, I've heard all about your brave gesture, my little bubble nose, Buck Rogers. Oh, Marilyn, my fair-haired flying fortress. Make me your target for tonight and bomb me with kisses. Oh, Lewis, honey, come into my arms. Bombs away. <laughs> Marilyn, when I'm close to you like this, do you notice how my eyes light up? Yes, Lewis, what does that mean? It must mean something. I ain't no pinball machine. <laughs> Ah, oh, Lewis, darling, you're so romantic. You and I are like those two little lovebirds out there in that tree. See the little girl lovebird and the little boy lovebird? What do you think they're talking about? Worm? Ah, <laughs> oh, Marilyn. Marilyn, my darling. When you hold me like this, I feel just like a bubble. A beautiful bubble. Floating eastward with the trade wind. Well, what was that? Some wise guy in Brooklyn with a BB gun. <laughs> Accompanied by the four hips, here is Camel's lovely Marilyn Maxwell from MGM, producers of the yearly. Marilyn sings. Old bottom of sky. I'm keeping my eyes still on you. What's the good word tonight? Are you gonna be mellow tonight? Oh, bottom of the sky, can't you see my little donkey and me? We're as happy as a Christmas tree, heaven for the one I love. She's gonna pop into question, that question. Do you, darling, do you do? It'll be easy, so easy, if I can only bank on you. Oh, bottom of the sky. Telling you why, now you know. Keep it in mind tonight. Keep a bright and no cloud from sight. Oh, bottom of the sky, don't you tell me when I'm needing you most. Hang the moon above her hips and pose. Hit me to the one I love. You can if you try. Don't tell me no lie. Will you be mellow and bright tonight?
your tea zone, that tea for taste and tea for throat is the supreme judge of a cigarette. Try a camel on your tea zone and see if the verdict isn't, ah, camels for me. See if your taste doesn't register the most delighted approval of camels' full-bodied, rich flavor, the mellow fragrance of its choice, superbly blended tobaccos. See if your throat is not in full accord with camels' cool mildness. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other brand. Three leading independent research organizations asked this question of 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Yes? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Well, here we are, Costello. Come on, climb into that rocket. Have it. I'm scared. I'm afraid of high places. I even get dizzy when I lick an airmail stamp. <laughs> My boy, you have nothing to fear. I'm going to help you. First, I'll boost you into the rocket and strap you into the cockpit. Then I'll bolt a hydromatic gyro to your fuselage. I'll rivet your altimeter to your instrument panel. I'll connect your mix master to your radar. And then... I'll weld your antenna to your oscillator. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. <laughs> you haven't got the nerve. Shame on you, Costello. Hey, look. Here comes the whole gang of Merlin. See you off. Oh, Louis, my darling, you're going to be a hero. When you come back, everyone will say... Costello, won't you tell us the secret of your fame? How you got that great reputation. Our new and Rickenbacker and the famous Howard Hughes Build up the nation's aviation My advice to flyers is never to get cross If your parachute don't open, report it to the board Farm boy, I start tell As you aim your rocket at the start Yeah, be well, great fella Give my regards to Mark I've had more hours in the air than any aviator's for years at Bullock Books here, I ran the yellow beater. When you get scared, I'm scared. Good luck to you, Costello. Be a man. Goodbye to you. Tell me, Costello, a great scientist like you must have some form of relaxation. What do you do to relieve nervous tension? What do I do? I'm a forever blowing bubble. With my double bubble gum Once I blew hot And I heard a splash My gum flew in My body's mustache It brought a great disaster Cause when they shaved my father's mustache, they found out he looked like a bird. <laughs> my honey, when you're way up in the stratosphere, I'm going to miss you so much. I'll just think of all those wonderful times we had together. Those gay nights at the store club, those dinners at the Ritz, expensive wines that made our love a song. The things you bought last summer, I'll have to pay for all winter long. Convoy on Costello When you prove the moon is made of tea We'll be the nicest fellow They have on information, please I work with men of science I never look for glory Even Einstein calls on me to mop his laboratory So a great expedition We'll be making history in the air and as you start your mission, every heart will say a tender prayer. There's a man up in the sky who buys up old balloons, 
Hey, up the fire truck that skips his name is Madman Moon. When you get a chair, you won't get a chair. Good luck to you, Costello. I'll need it. Goodbye to you. Come on, Costello, get into that rocket. Have it. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. Shame on you. You're a disgrace to the history of aeronautics. Yeah. Scientists have been fighting for years to advance aviation. In 1906, the Wright brothers, what were they fighting for? The first airplane flight. Right. In 1926, Charles Lindbergh, what was he fighting for? To fly the Atlantic Ocean. In 1936, Howard Hughes, what was he fighting for? To fly around the world. And in 1946, what are you fighting for? To stay on the camel cigarette program. <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Mount Alto, Washington, D.C., U.S. Army Fitzsimmons General Hospital, Denver, Colorado, U.S. Naval Hospital, Bainbridge, Maryland, U.S. Marine Hospital, Norfolk, Virginia, Veterans Hospital, Oakland, California. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. <laughs> Now, here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Well, Costello, the rocket to the moon tonight was certainly a fizzle. Yeah, it never left the ground. That guy ain't no inventor. I'm the guy that's got the invention. Now, what have you invented? Abbott, my new invention will do away with all electric toasters. There'll be no more electric toasters. No more electric toasters? You just plug in the bread. Oh, good night, folks. <laughs> Important reminder to Christmas shoppers, more pipe smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco. So when you give Prince Albert to a pipe smoker, you give a gift mighty sure of a warm welcome. Prince Albert gives a pipe smoker the rich flavor of mild tobacco, specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. Smokes nice and even, too, because it's crimp cut. The big pound tin of Prince Albert is all ready to send. It has a special bright Christmas wrapper on which a gift card is imprinted. And Saturday night, be sure to hear Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry with the popular singer of American folk songs, Red Foley. At Saturday night on NBC, Grand Ole Opry with Red Foley, the Duke of Paducah, and Minnie Pearl. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try Camels in your T-zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat to a T. Remember to give Camels for Christmas, too. A carton of mild, full-flavored Camels makes a wonderful gift. C-A-M-E-L-S.